Dave Hunt is an investigative journalist and has authored 18 books. His research and consulting expertise takes him around the world. Cal State University, Long Beach. And again, I forget the names of the scientists there who were working on this, and this is a number of years ago now. They did research, and they took people at random. And unless you're going to say everybody's been abducted, uh, they took people at random and who had no such idea, no indication they'd ever been abducted. And they um, uh, hypnotized them, took them into a deep state, then suggested that they were being approached by a UFO, asked them to describe it. Their description <laughs> was the same <laughs> as the others. Uh, they suggested you're being taken aboard. Or oh, what do the entities look like? And they came up with similar descriptions. And then when they're taken aboard, they're, what's happening to you? I'm getting a medical examination, you know. Or... In his book, Secrets of the UFOs, ufologist Don Elkins made the following observation. I have found that some people can achieve the contact phenomenon simply by being hypnotized and the same general message permeates over 90% of the millions of words received by thousands of people around the world. No one knows what hypnosis is. No one knows what goes on in the mind. It's an altered state of consciousness like yogis and uh, witch doctors have been practicing. Uh, it loosens the normal connection between your spirit and your brain. And of course, if the hypnotist can control you, make all kinds of suggestions, make you think uh, things are happening that are not happening, make you think you have powers that you don't, experiences that you haven't, even implant memories. Uh, other beings, if there are other minds out there, they could also do the same thing. Sir John Eccles, Nobel Prize winner for his research on the brain, describes the brain as, quote, a machine that a ghost can operate, unquote. What he means by that is your spirit operates your brain in a normal state of consciousness. In an altered state, reached under yoga, a TM, hypnosis, uh, you have loosened the normal connection between your spirit and your brain, and that allows another spirit, other entities, other minds to interpose themselves and begin to tick off the neurons in your brain, create a, a universe of illusion. I believe that it's demonic. I think all of the evidence indicates this. Some people claim that by allowing themselves to be put into an hypnotic trance, they are acting as a channeling device in which the extraterrestrial being speaks through them. The following is an actual sampling of those messages. We come from the Interplanetary Confederation of Solar Systems, and our purpose is to aid our brother man on the planet Earth as the new age dawns. The teacher that was known to you as Jesus was able to use many more of the abilities than the people of this planet. Unfortunately, man upon planet Earth has misinterpreted the meaning of this man's life. He was no different from any of you. He was simply able to remember certain principles. These principles may be realized by anyone at any time. It is only necessary that you avail yourself to our contact through meditation in order to begin to re-realize that which is rightfully yours, the truth of the creation and the truth of your position in it. Know ye not that ye are gods? We have been puzzled at times by the inability of the people in general of this planet to be awakened to this simple truth we find that the state of hypnosis brought about by the evolution of thought of the people of this planet is so great that it is necessary for him to maintain a constant awareness of his spiritual nature with meditation. Man is now in the transitional period before the dawn of a new age. With peace, love, brotherhood and understanding on man's part, he will see a great new era begin to dawn. In his book, Flying Saucer Pilgrimage, Bryant Reeves summarizes his findings in this statement. From our analysis, the teachings of the space beings appear to support many of the principles taught in Oriental philosophy 
by seers of the Far East. UFO researcher John Weldon then offers this question. How credible is it to think that literally thousands of genuine extraterrestrials would fly millions of light years simply to teach New Age philosophy, deny Christianity, and support the occult? And why would the entities actually possess and inhabit people just like demons do if they were really advanced extraterrestrials? Dr. Pierre Guerin, an eminent scientist associated with the French National Council for Scientific Research, concludes that UFO behavior is more akin to magic than to physics as we know it, and that modern UFO knots and the demons of past days are probably identical. The word demon in Greek comes from the root meaning knowledge or intelligence, implying that demons have access to knowledge and information denied to ordinary mortals. After what happened to me, the communion experiences, I decided that that might be a good idea to accept the idea of the devil just in case that's what I saw. If you look closely at the life of the world, you see the workings of evil in the world. There seems to be a sort of a machinery behind it that is far beyond just the accident of human life. You can literally <clears throat> hypnotize a person, tell them that there's a cat in their lap, they will see it, they will hear it, purr, they will pet it and feel it. It's not physically there. You tell the cat to scratch them, you know, and bring them out of it. There are scratch marks on their cheek. A non-physical object under the right conditions can leave physical evidence. Uh, I think it's demonic. <laughs> it's a uh, it's a spiritual power of some kind for which there is no physical explanation. It, the, you can't explain it with the laws of chemistry and physics as we know it. John Keel is a world-renowned expert on UFOs and has written numerous books and articles on the subject. A self-described agnostic, he made this statement. Thousands of books have been written on the subject of demonology which is the ancient and scholarly study of monsters and demons. The manifestations and occurrences described in this literature are identical to the UFO phenomenon. Victims of demonic possession suffer from the same medical and emotional symptoms as the UFO contactees. Does I would say sense? I was assaulted by something from the unknown rather than possessed by it. I, don't, I hope that I was never possessed by it, although there are those who might disagree with me. And uh, I don't think it was something out of craziness. If it came out of my mind, it came out of a part of my mind that uh, is universal to us all. In Close Encounters of the Third Kind, that first film that came out about UFOs, the house that the mother and, and little boy were living in, you know, the toys began running around and screws unscrewing them in the presence of UFOs. What the film was saying was the same people that run UFOs run haunted houses. And I would say that's absolutely true. In 1969, the United States Printing Office issued a 400-page publication entitled UFOs and Related Subjects, an Annotated Bibliography. The author was the senior bibliographer for the Library of Congress, Ms. Lynn E. Coteau. During her research, she read over 1,000 articles, books, and other literature. She summarizes her findings in the preface of the bibliography. A large part of the available UFO literature is closely linked with mysticism and the metaphysical. It deals with subjects like mental telepathy, automatic writing, and invisible entities, as well as phenomena like poltergeist manifestations and possession. Many of the UFO reports now being published in the popular press recount alleged incidents that are strikingly similar to demonic possession and psychic phenomena that have long been known to theologians and parapsychologists. This document was compiled for the United States Air Force and is now in the Library of Congress. Dr. Jacques Vallée has addressed the United Nations on UFOs and was the model for Lacombe in Steven Spielberg's Close Encounters of the Third Kind. He is the author of eight books on UFOs and has been widely recognized as the premier investigating scientist in the realm of UFO research. In his book, Messengers of Deception, Vallée says, an impressive parallel can be made between UFO occupants and the popular conception of demons.
and in his book Confrontations, he writes, the medical examinations to which abductees are said to be subjected, often accompanied by sadistic sexual manipulation, is reminiscent of the medieval tales of encounters with demons. He also made this statement, I believe that when we speak of UFO sightings as instances of space visitations, we are looking at the phenomenon on the wrong level. We are not dealing with successive waves of visitations from space. We are dealing with a control system. And he states, UFOs are the means through which man's concepts are being rearranged. They are engaging in a worldwide enterprise of subliminal seduction. Jacques Vallée, is, at least at that time when he wrote that book, was an agnostic. Interesting that he comes to basically the same conclusions I do as a Christian from my research. And he said uh, about UFOs, they're real, but they're not physical. They're messengers of deception. And this was based on his research of about 20 years. They seem to be psychologically preparing, setting us up for some ultimate delusion that is too horrible even to imagine as yet. I would agree with that. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refused to love the truth and so be saved.